right. Let me continue. The former personal assistant to John F. Kennedy Jr. She was more enamored of Howard Stern than John F. Kennedy Jr. She wasn't a Kennedy person. Her parents were Republican, but Rose Marie Terenzio wound up with a job that would be the envy of any young woman's career, personal assistant to John Kennedy Jr. And she has a new book, Fairy Tale Interrupted, and Rose Marie Terenzio is here. Hi. I mean, I could just <laughs> feel what it was like reading this book. I mean, just... You know, you talk about being his gatekeeper. I just can't imagine how many people wanted Everybody. something from him every single day. He was arguably the most famous man in the world at yeah. the time. And it was, um, everyone knew him everywhere. So, and everyone felt a connection to him, which was, which was really nice in a way. But it was difficult to keep that, you know, t as I say in the book, to give access to those who had it and to... Gate, be the gatekeeper for those who didn't. So it was, it was, it was difficult, but it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. So you were there with him, mm -hmm. obviously, with the startup of, of George Magazine, which was very, very exciting at the yeah. time. I remember the, you know, the great debut. With yeah, the big, the big press conference, and, and, and yeah. I mean, what was that like working at? at it was amazing because we felt like we were sort of at the center of the publishing, you know, universe, but also the political mm -hmm. universe, and having. You know, if you look at George Magazine today and you go by, you know, Newt Gingrich was featured in George and he's shaking it up again. And, you know, we had George Clooney as one of our covers yeah. and he's pretty civic minded and pretty politically active. And Madonna was our first If I Were President. She's performing the halftime show at the Super Bowl. So the, a lot of what happened in George is still relevant today. I mean, I don't know what that says about our political no, culture, I, but... No, it's <laughs> totally... Fact, the magazine would probably do better if it was a, a lot today. You, you, you said that you and uh, John Kennedy Jr. shared a sense of humor that uh, he wanted Madonna to dress up as, as his, his mother yes. for the cover. Yes. And she politely declined. Dear she's, Johnny Boy, I think she said... She's something. hilarious. Her, 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 her letter, she actually... Uh, allowed me to use her note in the book. Her publicist gave me permission, which was really nice of her. And um, but she, you know, she it was funny. I mean, it was hilarious. And but John was able to separate, you know, the political icon that is my mother or my father and my parents. They were, you know, they were sort of separate to mm -hmm. him, and he was not offended by the the part of it that he knew was the icon yeah, part of it. Yeah. yeah. So you write a lot about Carolyn Bissett, his mm -hmm. uh, wife, who you got to know really, really yes. well, like best we were friend, buddies. Like girlfriend. Yeah. Total girlfriend. And it was fascinating to read from your perspective because I was in New York at the time, and you're right. I mean, there isn't one nice thing that was ever written about no. her, except that no. she was beautiful. Yep. There was not one single nice thing. No. I mean, because she was... She yeah. took him away from the world. Yes. You know, in a way, I think people felt that she took their prince away. She took their, you know... Mm. They, like, there's something about... John belonging to the world that made people, I think in a way, never really want him to g get married and be, not be single and available anymore. It was, you know, the, it was a projection of a fantasy and I think she took that away. So she crushed many young women's yeah. hearts when, when she got married and I think, you know, I think there was a perception that, you know, people, I think there was a perception that she was this cold, sort of austere, um, and she wasn't at all. She was extremely warm. She was a girl's girl. She wasn't one of those girls that didn't like women or women didn't like her. And she took everybody under her wing. She mm. took staff members under her wing. She certainly took me under her wing. And she was very protective of her friends and of her family and of John. Well, there were horrible things written about her. Yeah. That she was a cokehead. Yeah. That uh, the night before they got on the infamous yeah. plane ride, that she or he had spent the night in the Carlisle Hotel because they were having. Well, he did spend the night in the hotel because his cousin Anthony, at the time, unfortunately, well, he yeah. passed away. But he was really sick, and Carolyn was spending a lot of time way uptown at the hospital with Carol and Anthony, and. John had forgotten his keys at the office, and Carolyn was up at the hospital, and instead mm. of going all the way uptown, he just said, I'm going to stay.
because I don't think she was coming home that night. I think she planned to mm -hmm. stay there with Carol. And you do write very honestly that she had put her foot down. She wasn't going to go to Rory Kennedy's wedding, and it was that wedding that was scheduled that week. Yeah, in I July. think I think she was at the point where she just sort of, you know, it was it was a. It was a spat like any other. Unfortunately, their spats were played out publicly. And the, the fact that she wasn't going to go was just like any other wife or husband saying, you know what, you can go by yourself. I'm not going to go. And because of what happened, it was played up so much. Um, you know, and the book, it, you know, what, what I think I wanted to get across, and I think I did get across about the book, is the book is not just about how they died. Mm. It's it's about my experience, my fairy tale interrupted in their circle and then out of it, you know. Mm. I was sort of a fish out of water and they took me in their circle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was amazing. You, yeah, you became kind of one of them. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I certainly became very close to them and they were they became like my family members. So it was it was heartbreaking. It was, you know, it, it was a fairy tale interrupted for everybody. I mean, it was a huge story, yeah. of course, here in, in Massachusetts. And I can remember the great columnist David Nyan saying at the end of that year that it was one of the greatest underplayed stories of the century. And, you know, because that happened in 1999. And yeah. he, he thought, I mean, of all the stories that had happened, it was just so profound because it was such a tragedy. It was... I think almost it, any tragedy that the Kennedys had experienced. Yeah, this was this was as I as as I've said before in um, in the book. It was it was like my Earth had cracked in half. Like it just was it it just was devastating. It was they were so young. They were he was so that was not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You know that was not supposed to be the way. You know his life ended, and unfortunately, or hers, and unfortunately, it did. Of course, you you write about how you had entree into any anyone. I'm Rose Maria Terenzio. I work for John yeah, Kennedy. From you, John you Kennedy's do, office, yeah, I used everybody to say, took your call. Yeah, if you any said restaurant. from John Kennedy's office, anyone, but there was dead silence sometimes on the phone. Like people would sort of <laughs> choke and say, <laughs> oh, and I, well. "Yeah, I remember when I actually John had done mm -hmm. the Howard Stern show, and yeah. when I called the producer and I said, you know, John." wants to come on the show. And he said, you know what, I'm really busy. I really don't have time for jokes. <laughs> like, it just was so right. unbelievable to him that, that John would do that, yeah. you know, that he would go on the show. So you also say, I mean, how hard it was for you afterwards. I mean, and even putting that on your resume, it's like, really? And well, people sort of, you know, you go into a place where, you know, you're, you're in, and, and this is like a still, you're interviewing for a job, let's mm -hmm. say, and it's still, a huge story yeah, even six sure. months later so people are looking at your resume and going oh my god I'm so sorry and then it mm -hmm. you know and and I, I wrote in the book that one guy actually broke down in tears wow. a headhunter yeah. and I'm sitting there like oh god please don't <laughs> do this to me right now well it's a great book it's really well written too thank you it's, it's fun thank it's, you it's upbeat as upbeat as you can be yeah you know, yeah it is it's it's the good times too mm -hmm. and it's you know and it's the good times after even you know it's how you come back from from that all right rosemarie terenzio thank, thank you so much, so much.